My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some auto hotkey. To download auto hotkey, go to autohotkey.com, click the green button called download, take download current version and auto hotkey will download. Click it. That will start the installer. Take express installation. Auto hotkey is now installed. We can click exit. To create your first script, go to your desktop. Simply just right click anywhere you want. Click new, click auto hotkey script. This has now created an auto hotkey script with the name new auto hotkey script. Feel free to change that name. I'll keep it. So our script is empty now. And to edit it, we simply just right click, click edit script. That will open up a notepad and that could edit our code. We can use more advanced editors. However, I'll recommend you notepad to get started. The code will be the same and we will have no disturbing features around. So let's create a simple script that will change one word to another whenever this script runs. You can see this as an auto replace function. In auto hotkey, we will call it a hot string. To create a hot string, let me have a new line here. We will say two colons and then we will have the word that we want to get changed to something else. That could be AHK like this, then two more colons and then we will say what word do we want to get AHK changed to whenever we write it. That could be auto hot key like this. Then we just need to end our script. We do that with the return. To save our script, we press Ctrl S, that's it. And let me just move this icon up here. So in order to run this script, I just double click on it. And to see that we actually have activated this script, go down to your tray. There's nothing to see, but if you click this up arrow, you'll see an auto hotkey logo with the name of our script. This one was called new auto hotkey script. So if you run few uh, different scripts, always rename your scripts so we can easily identify them. That's it. Let's see that it works. So right click on your desktop again, click new, click new text document. That will open up another notepad. So we have it here and let's say that write AHK, then space, the auto hotkey will come up. AHK space, the auto hotkey will come up. Also, if you write AHK and then enter, it will work or tab. That means this one works as default when we write an in character. That is a space, an enter or a tab. If we want to have it work without the in character, that is whenever we write AHK, we want this to work. Then we simply just go over here to our script and place an asterisk between the two colons. In order to update our script, we save it. We can either do it up here in file, save as of course, or simply just click Control S, that has saved it. Now we can double click the script here, that will update the script. We will see that we get a warning, yes please, keep updating it the script, then it will work. So if I go to a new line here, now if I write AHK, it will immediately get changed to auto hotkey. That's quite clever. However, check this. If I write one AHK, it will not get changed. That is because there's uh, another letter in this word. So per default, it will not get changed. Say that we want this to get activated as well. We go over here to our asterisk and then we type in the question mark. That one will make it work whenever we write AHK inside some other letters. So let's save the script, control S, double click to activate it, click yes. If we go over here, we say one AHK, that's it. You'll see that the AHK gets changed to auto hotkey. So we have combined these two properties. You can have one of them or both of them. Another important part of auto hotkey that is hotkeys. A hotkey is simply just a key that you define and whenever you press that key or a combination of keys, then the script will run. It will look like this. So let me delete the old script here. That's it. So for example, the shortcut for a control is this hat here. And then I can say control Q. So that one will be my combination. 
So whenever I press Control Q, I want my script to start. That's it. I press two colons. Then I can go to a new line, always make new lines. Here I will just have a send some text into the active window. So I'll say send, then a comma, and then I'll have my text. That could be, is this video helping you? Then please give it a thumbs up. That's it. We can now save the script like this. We can double click to update it. Then we go over here. And now when I press Control Q, this text comes up. You'll see here, it comes up, it comes up like that. We can combine commands. So say that we want this send here that will send the text to the active window. We will also like a message box. A message box is a box that shows up on the screen. It will pause the script. So it's quite useful when we debug, that is find errors in our script, check that everything works. Let me show you. So up here below the hotkey and above the send, I'll say msg box. Again, a comma, and then I'll say what will be in our message box. It could be this is the start, like this. Then I press Control S. I double click the script to override it. That's it. And whenever I go over here, I press Control Q, then this script will run. So let me show you. Control Q, then the message box will show up. And see that we uh, don't get this message on yet. But when I click OK, the text will get written. Did you see that? It added a new line. We can also launch applications. Say that I want to open up a specific application. I could add that to my script as well. That will be with a run command, then a comma, and then I'll have to type in the path of that application. But if it is a standard Windows application, we can just type in the shortcut. So for example, if I type in calc, that will open up the calculator. So if I save it, I double click to update, I say yes, then I press Control Q, then you'll see that it opens up the calculator here, and then the message box come up. We'll click OK, and you see nothing will happen here. That is because this send will send this text to the active window. And because the active window is the calculator, then nothing will happen. In order to bring the focus back to the notepad so we can have another line written, we simply just go to right before the send, make a new line, then we'll say win, activate, then we'll say comma, and then we will have the title of the window that we want to activate. The title of this window is asterisk new text document notepad. So I'll just write it here, asterisk new text document notepad, like this. That's it, let's see how it works. Close down the calculator, save the script, double click to update it, then click yes. Now when I press Control Q, you'll see that the calculator will open. Here I can do calculations. The script will not start until I click here, I click OK. And there you go, we have activated this window back. We could also open all sorts of other Windows applications, such as another instance of Notepad. I'll simply just change this to Notepad. Do note that this is only work as I said with Windows applications, so I'll click Save, double click it to update it, like this. Press Ctrl Q, and there you go, we have opened up a Notepad. So we'll finish here, let me go down here. Let's say that we want to open up application that is not Windows standard, that could be WinRAR. Then we'll need to find the path of that application. So if I go to my Windows folder, I'll go to the program files here, WinRAR. Then I'll find the program that I want to open. I shift right click, then I copy as path. So if I wanted to have the WinRAR open instead of the notepad, I simply just go up here and put in the path like this. So let's save the script, Control S, double click to update it, and let's try to run it. Control Q, you'll see here that WinRAR 
This will open. Let us close this one down and we will have another line. So that's how you open up both Windows programs and custom programs. We can also run websites. So let's say that I, instead of running a program here, I would run a website. I simply just change what's in here with the website address. So that is HTTPS. Then I could take my website. That is this one. And let's see how that works. So control S, save the script, double click it. Yes, please. And then we'll start it with control Q. So you'll see here that this one opens up my website. And by the way, you can join the auto hotkey discord. I made one, just click connect here and find the auto hotkey channel. That is where we talk about auto hotkey and exchange solutions to problems. Let me close this one down again and we will have another line. Of course, say that we want this to open up in edge, say Microsoft edge.exe. That is the exit file of the browser like this. Then we'll control S, save it, update the script like this. Then we can run it. Control Q. And you will see that my website now opens up in edge. That's fine. Now, instead of these scripts has to be started with a double click like up here, we could have this script automatically started at Windows startup. So in order to automatically start auto hotkey scripts at Windows startup, we simply just go to our start menu. Then we'll find the run. So search for it or whatever this one is called in your local language. Click it to open it. And then you go to shell startup. So shell colon startup. Then we'll click OK. That will open up a folder. This folder is having everything that needs to be started at Windows startup. So if I copy this or move this script over here, this script will now automatically start at my Windows startup. That is clever. If I make some scripts that will help me in my daily job, I can just now start these scripts. Thank you for watching. Do you want more auto hotkey? Check out my 80 minute auto hotkey guide to the left, or you can check out UiPath. I'll recommend you do so because it's free and it's very advanced. It can do all the things auto hotkey can and a lot more.